All right, update number two on the uh, rustic cedar door project for Allie and Ryan. Uh, now I'm making the door panel frames and uh, I've got what they call rails and styles and I think I showed the the mortises that's the the hollow part on the rails and now I'm working on the tenons for the styles um, <clears throat> so what I've done is you, you have to the wood's not all the same thickness so you've got to pick your reference face which is the outside face and I don't know if you can see some kind of carpenter marks here's a triangle so I know this is the top one there's the bottom half of the triangle on the bottom one and then there's a the little pig's tail on the little V notch so you know which are the reference edges so I've cut the grooves with with this bit or this uh, blade it's a dado blade on the table saw and then I'm also using that uh, with a different height setting I, I ran the part across it with a fence like this to cut the grooves and now I'm cutting back the dados. I, I used the radial arm saw just to get a good clean edge but didn't go the full depth and so this one I've run over using the miter set at 90 degrees and using a guide of where the dado blade cuts I set this over over here and run it across the blade and just keep moving it over until I nibbled all of that away. Now again I want to reference this face because every every board's going to be different thickness slightly because we're just leaving it rough sawn. So by referencing this on the table of the radial arm saw it cuts from above. So regardless of the thickness so long as I always reference the finished surface or the front surface here I can just do one setup and do the same thing nibbling. So that's over here on the radial arm saw so it's nice that I've got two saws at once and I just happen to have a separate dado blade for that so uh, I'll just make a, a one cut here to show you and then uh, I'll work on the rest so put my earplugs in and uh, see if I'm all set up or not the thing about the radial arm saw is that the blade in this case a dado blade it cuts the sacrificial fence so you can just use that to basically set you know exactly where the blade's going to cut so you can get quite accurate so that's a you do a little knife cut and with the regular blade that's how I cut that clean edge I don't think the dado blade will leave such a clean edge so that's why I pre-cut that edge not to the proper depth but just to make a good a good clean edge all right ready Okay, so that I've kind of got knife knife marks uh, from my layout tools, uh, and I pretty well hit those. I wanted it to be a little bit tight on the uh, mortise, so I can clean these rough surfaces up if I want. You can always take a little more wood away. But it's very hard to put it back. So here's just kind of showing the where it's going to go and it does just fit but it's a little tight so by the time I just skin that with some hand tools both the inside and and the outside I think it'll work fine so I've got the groove now on the rails these are the styles and then I'll have to cut back I'll, I'll do what's called a haunch tenon where you leave some of this to fill fill this gap of course this isn't cut to length I'll trim that back you want to leave it longer so if you were chiseling this out by hand you would not break that piece out so likely so you do your um, mortises first and then you cut it to finish length anyway that, so that'll just that haunch part and then it'll cut back here cut down to fit that 
and then we'll do a draw bore pin. I'll probably do another video for that. All right, good deal. Talk to you on number three.